John Marshall Sawyer was born on August 14, 1874, at the Sawyer Place in Green, Maine. He spent his early life in the shadow of the White Mountains. He learned the values of honesty, hard work, clean living, and faith in God from his parents, Marshall and Araxine Wilkins Sawyer, as well as the conservative values exemplified by the citizens of Green. He and his older brother, Lyndon, successfully operated a combination grocery store and post office in downtown Green during the late 1890s. He served as postmaster during this period of time. J.M. honed his business skills here. He left the store in the care of his brother and headed for Billings, Montana by train in 1900 with a new business venture in mind. Mr. Sawyer was a great man and he was a fine individual. He left here when he was a young person, and he told me that he went up west, and when he got off the train out in Billings, Montana, he had $10 only in his pocket. And he went to the station manager. The station manager worked for the railroad company, and asked him if he knew of an elderly couple that needed somebody to work for them and the man thought, and he says, yes. He says, I know of one, and it's quite a ways out. And Mr. Sawyer says, oh, I have to walk. And he says, no. And he says, I, there's a wagon right over there that's going within a few minutes. And you can hop on that, and the fellow will let you ride all the way out, and he'll be going right by this ranch. So Mr. Sawyer did just that, and he rode right by the ranch. <coughs> Not road by it, but he rode to the ranch. And he got off, and when he did, he talked to the man, and the man hired him. They made a deal. The man did not have any answer, any, any people to leave his money to, or his farm to, or his ranch to. And uh, he thought this would be a good thing. And uh, Mr. Sawyer made a deal that he would take care of the man's sheep, providing he could have all of the lambs. The man was selling the, he would grow them to a certain age and then sell the wool. So the, the man wanted the males, and Mr. Sawyer kept the females. And in a few short years, Mr. Sawyer had a lot of land, a lot of sheep and lambs. And he says, that's how I make my money. And he was an interesting individual. You'd have to get up kind of early in the morning to keep up with him for the day. You know how to make, take a dollar and scramble it so it would be worth a lot more than a dollar. J.M. Sawyer became manager of a combination sheep ranch and wheat farm in Lincoln, Montana. After two years, he sold his sheep and took a job managing the Crow Agency Mercantile in Lame Deer. He also began managing the Sand Creek Ranch which raised sheep and wheat. In 1905, he returned to Green to marry Annie Hill and bring her with him back to Montana. During the next seven years, they had four children, Robert, Truth, Barbara, and June. The children were happy and healthy. They had no idea that they were living in Spartan conditions on the plains. During this time, J.M. saved his money for the next step in his business plan. The children often took baths in the horse trough before dressing to go to church on Sunday. The family always dressed in their best clothes to go to church. In 1913, J.M. bought a mercantile store in Miles City and bought the Rosebud Mercantile in 1916. His business model was cash or barter, but no credit. He was told his model wouldn't work, but it did. In 10 years, he became the grocery store king of Montana, operating a chain of 33 stores in the eastern two-thirds of the state. Buildings that housed his stores survive in Big Timber, Red Lodge, and Laurel. Most of his stores were built next to a railroad so that he could easily supply his stores. He was an advertising genius his ads told potential customers that he had the lowest prices, 
and bill his employees as the friendly folks. These ads show store locations and prices for selected items. Sawyer's corporate headquarters building was on Montana Avenue in Billings. As a result of his willingness to barter, he kept people in rural Montana alive during the Great Depression. He began a trucking company to transport produce and built mills to process grain. He also brought in caterpillar tractors to plow the soil. J.M. raised and sold Belgian draft horses. He owned the Elder Grove Cattle Ranch west of Billings. His cattle provided milk for dairy products and meat that were sold in his stores. After his death, his heirs sold the ranch to a nonprofit group to create the Yellowstone Boys and Girls Ranch for underprivileged children. The group renovated the building complex to house and school children. It still meets the needs of young people today. With his Montana businesses running smoothly, J.M. split his time between Montana and Green Bay. He built a house on a large tract of land east of town. J.M. started a new business venture, Sawyer Farms. He constructed a barn complex across the road to house a dairy herd and sheep. He and his wife Annie also used her family land and barns on Hills Ridge to hold and feed the livestock. Sawyer Farms produced beef, mutton, and wool. He built a dairy processing plant to convert milk into a wide range of dairy products, including milk, cream, butter, and ice cream. The Sawyer brand became popular throughout the region. This carton contains freshly churned Sawyer Farms butter spread it on thick. At Sawyer Farms up here in Green, where cows are cows and cream is cream, under conditions clean and neat, we make a product hard to beat. It cools the tummy, warms the heart. A radiant health it helps impart. Brings roses to the kitty's cheeks. Tone, class, and quality it bespeaks. It's rapidly achieving fame. Why, sure, we'll gladly tell its name. Sawyer Farms Ice Cream. Bet you'll like it. John Sawyer started a very nice ice cream business. He had some little buildings all put together by Mr. Austin. And then they were transported to different locations. Mr. Sawyer went out and found locations in the towns of Green, Lewiston, Auburn, Gray. Down in Portland, he had two. South Portland, there were two. And then we went over to uh, Yarmouth and Freeport and Brunswick, Bath, up through to Gardner, and then to Augusta, and down to Winthrop, and back to Green. And he had 16 total. I'd take a panel truck and go up to Litmore Falls and pick up uh, cream so that they could use it to make ice cream on the day that I was gone. When I got back to the ice cream plant, my truck was already loaded and I could, uh, within 15 minutes, I could be on the road, going down the road, ready to deliver ice cream to one place. If uh, things were going real good, I would have maybe 500 little packages of ice cream made up, and I would go to certain places like in the lower income people's bracket down in Lewiston or Auburn, and uh, stand there and give away ice cream to kids. Do you know anything about um, him giving away uh, gifts at Christmas time to some of the needy families? Yes, how do I? Well, he says, I had a job for you to do tomorrow. 
says, what? Well, I wanted to send you to Portland. He said, what for? Well, he says, I wanted to send you to saw your Barca store. You come up to the house and I'll give you the list that you're supposed to do down there. And you're going down there tomorrow morning early and be there ready to have all this stuff loaded. He says, I've already called it in and told them that you'd be there and the stuff is going to be on the wall waiting for you. I went and I picked up all of these skis, sleds, clothes, Mackinaws, heavy coats for winter for the elderly. Every child in town and every elderly person was to get a get -up. I'm telling you, I had a mess in that truck. It was heaped right up full and covered with a canvas and tied together good. J.M. Sawyer's most visible legacy is the Araxine Wilkins Sawyer Memorial Building that he constructed across the road from his home. The building was dedicated in 1936. Its purpose was to provide the people of Green with fine arts programs. No admission was to be charged so that anyone in town could afford to attend the performances. He set up a foundation and funded it. This 216-seat fine arts auditorium was dedicated to the memory of his beloved mother, Araxine Wilkins Sawyer. The Araxine Wilkins Sawyer Foundation still carries out its mission efficiently today. J.M. Sawyer went to Helena, Montana on business in late September 1946. He was riding in a car on Montana Avenue when it was involved in a serious accident. He was thrown from the car and died in the local hospital from internal injuries on October 2, 1946. His body was brought from Helena back to Green and was laid to rest in his family plot in Valley Cemetery on the southern outskirts of Green. His wife and deceased children and their spouses are also buried in the Sawyer plot. John Marshall Sawyer was first and foremost a loving husband and father. He was also an entrepreneur, philanthropist, and humanitarian. J.M. Sawyer lived by the Golden Rule. His humility was evident whenever he sponsored charities but stayed behind the scenes. His caring nature is a lasting legacy in the land of his birth. John Marshall Sawyer stands tall 